This is Spanish music, from Galicia to be precise. For BC artist Greg Simpson, discovering this Celtic culture in northern Spain was not what he expected. The Celtic region of Spain, Galicia, is, is almost identical to Brittany and Ireland and Scotland. In fact, the music that you'll hear walking through the streets is, you know, bagpipers and uh, uh, hurdy-gurdies. I mean, it's, it's like a complete culture that embraces the west coast of Europe. Simpson was in Spain and France through June and July. As co-organizer of West Coast Surreal, a Canadian perspective, he had a great deal to do. The first exhibition he set up was at Chateau Grimaldi in Cagnes-sur-Mer in France. Later he would find himself in Santiago de Compostela, Spain, in what used to be the epicenter of the Surrealist movement. The exhibition there was at the Museo Grinnell, named for one of the forefathers of Surrealism, Simpson says. Grinnell uh, was uh, Eugenio F. Grinnell, was a Spanish uh, painter and poet and uh, a Surrealist uh, organizer. Uh, organizer of the Surrealist movement in Spain, and it linked to us through these publications and exhibitions that have gone on for the last 30 or more years, um, an international network, really, of groups in different countries. And uh, Grinnell uh, finally died in his 90s, and uh, his daughter, Natalia Segata, uh, now runs the museum, uh, which is dedicated to him and to uh, showing Surrealist groups and artists from around the world. Simpson says it's all part of the mandate of Museo Grinnell, to carry on the legacy of surrealist work, which he says never has died out, although it may have its share of academics who have declared it invalid as a contemporary art form. Many of us think of Picasso and Dali when we think of surrealism, and this is where Simpson says there are two camps to the style. In fact, uh, there's two sides to surrealism. Uh, one is uh, closer to Magritte and Dali, De Carico, the artists who kind of used elements of reality, but changed them around and, and, and morphed them and uh, juxtaposed them in strange ways. And the other modality of surrealism, uh, which was actually closer to the hearts of people like Andre Breton, the founder, who, who was a poet, and, and they, they were very involved in automaticist techniques of uh, probing the unconscious. So people like Miro and Andre Masson. Of the four Canadians exhibiting there, Simpson says there are some in both camps of surrealism. He says Panina Grenier and Martin Guderna fall much more towards the realist side of surrealism, whereas himself and Gordon Payne are self-described abstract automaticists. Wherever they fall on the surrealist spectrum, the artists had a warm welcome at the Museo Grinnell. One form that welcome took was in the amount of space allotted to the Canadians in a museum that sports the works of Marcel Duchamp and Juan Miro in their collection, just to name a few. It takes up three rooms of the museum. We each have our own uh, room as uh, Gordon and Martin sort of share two ends of a, a big, or either end of a big room, and Panina's work is there, and her books, and all of our publications that we're in, and posters of exhibitions going back to the 60s and 70s and 80s. Uh, so there's a long history here to celebrate of, of Vancouver being a, a renowned, really, as a, as a center for the uh, continuation of the surrealist uh, dream. Simpson says that, in a sense, he and his fellow exhibiting artists have allied themselves with an old movement. In the art world, he says there's a movement a day in contemporary art circles, but he believes surrealism goes back to the Renaissance, long before Picasso and Dali. Which is why he's honored to be asked, along with Grenier, Guderna, and Payne, to be included in the museum's collection. This will be in a collection with uh, artists who I believe uh, were friends, all friends of Eugenio Grinnell. Uh, who seem to have known everybody. Um, we're, so we'll, we will be in a collection with uh, Picasso, with Max Ernst, uh, with uh, Man Ray, uh, Marcel Duchamp, uh, Juan Miro, and uh, Wilfredo Lam, and André Masson. So the big guns of surrealism are all in this collection. This is refreshing for Simpson, who comes from a country, he says, that has a movement of its own, declaring the demise of painting. He finds it ironic that Canadian surrealists need to visit a central region of surrealist art history in Spain to be appreciated as Canadian artists. And most of us don't have a lot of patience with the painting is dead uh, 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 movement. <laughs> it's kind of an academic thing, actually. Uh, the universities sort of dominate the, uh, the art world these days, and uh, they've sort of decreed painting to be uh, off limits, you know. They've kind of made painting some sort of a medium to be distrusted, and photography is the only medium that we can trust. I mean, it's this is a particular thing of Vancouver, especially. <laughs> but when you put this kind of work in a European setting and these historic palaces and castles and things I've been showing in 
the great artists of the 20th century, when you're in that context, it seems to rub off a little bit. I mean, you just, it gains a little bit of stature. The paintings by these four surrealists will bask in the Spanish sun a while longer. This is the final week of West Coast Surreal at the Museo Grinnell. But after it's over, these Canadian artists from the West Coast will have made a mark on the legacy of surrealism and a place where it sprang into the world's attention. On the coast, I'm Trevor Hughes in Vancouver.